And we also have an item today that was introduced by uh, Councilman Pettis and Stone Cipher. Um, uh, today's the day for the public hearing, and this has uh, been called the uh, aggressive panhandling, but it has to, to do specifically with our efforts to try and, and keep our school children safe in Northeast Oklahoma City. Is there anyone here hoping to speak on the item today as part of the public hearing? I know we have a few people that have signed up. And uh, Meg, I know you were going to work on, uh, on um, uh, figuring out a way that the curbside chronicle would be minimally impacted, if impacted at all. Uh, Kenny, um, kindly after our last meeting, drafted an amendment that could be presented uh, for this that would roll back the distance um, from cafes and things that seems to have the biggest impact. I know some curbside chronicle folks are here to talk to us about the impact and, and have some suggestions, but um, that would be helpful. We also talked about changing the, the term unwanted to something a little clearer like uninvited that would make it a little bit more clear that you could certainly invite someone to come uh, offer you the curbside chronicle. We have also, uh, Ronnie and Whitley are both here, we have met another time, we met last Friday. Um, they've got some great ideas um, to bring forward a business plan that will sort of modify, not necessarily their satisfaction completely, but will help modify and try to um, um, explain to people the very significant difference mm -hmm. between panhandling and those that are working uh, to earn dollars to take themselves out of the situation that they're in. So I hope to hear from them today. And the issue we're addressing with this really arose from a, a Millwood school um, area where um, panhandlers are interacting with children and children are, because they seem frightened, are, are crossing the street to, to avoid the interaction and putting themselves at danger and the Millwood school system has asked for some help and Councilman Pettis has been working with them. So it's a, it's a layered issue and, you know, and it, it's hard to explain in a couple of sentences. Uh, but let's go through the, uh, the, the, the citizens who have signed up to speak today and I'll ask you to keep your comments to three minutes or less if you can. Good morning. My name is Ronnie O'Connor. I live at 1735 Northwest 12th Street and I am the director of the Curbside Chronicle. I want to start by acknowledging the difficult job of a city council person. It is no easy task representing the various voices, ideologies, and desires of your constituents. And I am grateful for the concern from numerous council persons on how these proposed amendments will negatively affect the curbside chronicle. There has been a lot of discussion around the horseshoe as to how we can protect the curbside chronicle while continuing to pass laws that limit panhandling in Oklahoma City. Despite city council's well intentions to protect curbside, this objective is not possible. It is not possible to pass an anti-panhandling ordinance that is not also an anti-curbside ordinance, even though curbside vendors are not panhandling. Even if curbside is not the intended target, it is impossible for OKC to make restrictions to panhandling without also restricting and negatively affecting curbside and our ability to provide a positive alternative for individuals in need. I truly believe that City Council and the Curbside Chronicles share the same goal of reducing panhandling in Oklahoma City. We just differ in opinion on the appropriate approach to the issue. The Curbside Chronicle was created as a direct response to panhandling in OKC. Panhandlers and people in the situation of homelessness face of many barriers to traditional employment. Street papers provide an opportunity for these individuals to earn income in a more empowering way, transitioning them from panhandlers to salesmen and then from salesmen on to further opportunities. At Curbside, we believe in meeting people where they are and working alongside them to overcome individu individual barriers. We are not the solution to panhandling, but we are part of an ongoing effort to find a solution and to provide real life-changing opportunities for people in poverty. Unfortunately, these ordinances may cripple us to a point where we can no longer fulfill our missions and cease to exist. I do not believe that criminalizing panhandling does anything to reduce panhandling in our city. I do not see how ticketing and jailing panhandlers does anything to change their lives for the better. But I do know that the Curbside Chronicle has reduced the number of panhandlers in OKC, helping many end their homelessness. Curbside is working. We have a lot more to accomplish OKC in OKC, but I believe our program is already doing far more to end panhandling than any anti-panhandling ordinance ever could. And we are accomplishing this success not by demonizing and punishing panhandlers, but by showing them compassion and understanding for, them, for their circumstances and offering them a better way. Curbside is already suffering from the median ordinance that was passed in December. We have seen a drop in sales in this issue due to the fact that many of our vendors are still trying to find places to sell around Oklahoma City. 80% of curbside vendors relied on sales from medians prior to that ordinance passing. Um, and we are having to combat yet another restrictive ordinance that takes away our ability to move forward from the December ordinance. 
Furthermore, some police officers do not understand the median ordinance well enough to enforce it properly. Since January, we have already had four instances where police officers have kicked curbside vendors off the sides of the streets. These vendors were not illegally standing on medians, but on the sides of the road, where council suggested that vendors move. However, police officers have told vendors everything from it is now illegal to panhandle in OKC, to vendors need to get permits to panhandle, to vendors can stand on the side of the roads but need to be 200 feet away from intersections, to it is illegal to stand and panhandle on the sides of the roads. Um, for fear of being ticketed, our vendors have obliged and move, moved away from these legal vending locations, but it is impossible to express the feeling of defeat that vendors are feeling right now and the loss of hope. If passed, this additional ordinance will significantly reduce the remaining legal spots where vendors can sell in downtown OKC, Bricktown Plaza, and other areas of high foot traffic. There are outdoor seating areas, ATMs, and public bus stops all over these pedestrian-friendly zones. If passed, this additional ordinance could effectively end curbside, and I truly believe this is something that neither of us want to happen in Oklahoma City. Um, I do not believe that City Council truly intends and wants to criminalize poverty. I don't know um, if City Council fully understands the effects of these ordinances on people in poverty, but I'm asking you to take a different approach this time. We can't undo the damage of the December ordinance, but we can try to save what's left of curbside and have us thrive in the future. Because I've realized that despite my efforts, the future of curbside is not in my hands. The future of curbside is in your hands, and the decisions you make today determine our tomorrow. Thank you so much. Thanks. Good morning, Mayor, morning, City Chris. Council, Chris Harrison, 1425 Northeast 48th Street, here in Oklahoma City, Ward 7. I'm currently the president of Millwood School Board of Education. Uh, this is our ter third time coming uh, before you. Uh, simply, uh, Dr. King was quoted as saying that the purpose of law is to establish order. Um, the purpose that the proposed panhandling ordinance is not about what has occurred, but what possibly could occur. It's about us uh, being more reactive, being proactive versus being reactive at this point. Uh, it does not unjustly prohibit someone, but primarily seeks to curtail an issue that has the potential to impose undue stress on children simply just going to school. Uh, we at the Millwood School Board definitely uh, appreciate what you all have done so far with the ordinance. I would like to add, we do have a clear understanding, our superintendent has stated this as well, about the 50 feet that we're proposing today. It began at 1,000 and made its way to 100 and now at 50. So as we move forward with this situation, we do uh, support the ordinance at this point in time and we do support the growth of our community. Uh, but at this point in time, it's, it's not necessarily about what we feel about the homeless and disenfranchised, but more importantly, where Millwood students are concerned and other students around Oklahoma City, uh, we've been elected to make sure that they are safe and have a safe environment when going to school. And that's in, that was our, our, our number one intention as far as being here. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. We're ready to vote? All right, cast your votes. Motion passes 8-1. Seven two. You want, let's vote again so everybody can be properly recorded. Uh huh. Seven two.